Okay. We have gone through this bill and it is now up to draft 1.1. And it's grown to nine pages from seven pages. That's what I can tell you. So, um, Rebecca Wasserman from Legislative Council is here to walk us through the latest um, draft. Uh, Mr. Chair, is this 163? Yeah, what did I say? Uh, that's okay. Just a note to Peggy. I clicked on it on the website and it takes you to an error page. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't oh. know uh, what's up with that. Hmm. I, mean, I, I didn't. I just did that, and I didn't get that. So let me try again. Share the document if it's not yeah. up. No, it it tells me that the page doesn't exist when I click. That's weird. Can you try again? Because I just I just clicked it okay. and worked fine. Uh, nope, not for me. Huh. Um, I'm not sure I can hmm. read. I mean, if if uh, Becky's going to share the screen, it won't matter. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's very strange because it's. Well, why don't we share the screen just because there is some technical difficulties? Okay. Hey, your committee assistants hang out somewhere where they're not doing. Oh, so I saw Alex earlier this morning, but I haven't seen him since. Oh, he's over. He's helping transportation. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, can everyone see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, just my Zoom is not cooperating. Okay, I'll just. Go, go with what I have here. Um, uh, Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, this is a strike all amendment to uh, Senate Bill 163, uh, which um, was titled as introduced an act relating to state court jurisdiction for special immigrant juvenile status. Um, but that title uh, is changed has changed in this version of the bill, um, of the amendment. Um, so I can, uh, there were some global changes throughout that I think might be helpful to just mention um, before I start. Um, so in the bill as introduced, um, the reference to, uh, to the uh, child who was Petitioning for special immigrant ju uh, juvenile status was a um, at-risk uh, non-citizen child, and a change that was made throughout this uh, this amendment it, um, is to refer to those children as vulnerable non-citizen children. So you'll see that um, change throughout, um, and then there are also the primary changes throughout also deal with, um, uh, I guess not expanding, but uh, amending the definition of court um, to make it clear that um, the courts that can uh, review these, uh, these petitions and make special findings for children um, are, will have jurisdiction over the child in other circumstances than just um, probate and family division. And that these findings that are being made are findings that are within the um, jurisdiction of that court and not necessarily just being done because a child has made this type of petition. Um, so, Becky, Becky, this is Joe Betting. Could you just back up to line 19? on page one and tell me what the difference is between citizen and citanza. Oh, um, that, uh, the, the version that you have, the paper copy has a, uh, a spelling error. <laughs> and I, I had sent um, Peggy a, an updated version, which is what is reflected um, on, the, on the screen and, and will be on the website. It, it is on the website. I can't quite read it from this distance. 
What is citizen or citizens? citizens. Okay. Yeah, so that this the definition of child or children. Um, so it's referring to uh, someone who is unmarried individual or individuals who have not yet attained 21 years of age and who are not yet a United States citizen or citizens. Still sounds kind of strange to me, but Philip's the English major. I think it looks okay. I think well, it's because the, the definition cool. I is... think we move forward. <laughs> so, so this is actually one of the um, changes that were made um, is in the definition of child in subdivision two on page one, um, adding to the definition that uh, along with being an unmarried individual or individuals um, who are not yet 21, that the child is also not a United States citizen or citizens, plural or singular. Um, and I just wanted to point in subdivision one, the def there's a definition of vulnerable here, um, and that is replacing that reference to at risk um, that was in the previous version. Uh, the next change is in the definition of court, which is what I mentioned that the court is now means any court that has jurisdiction over an unmarried individual or individuals who have not yet attained 21 and who are not US citizens. And that includes the probate division and the family division of the Superior Court, but that is meant to um, also include other courts that might have jurisdiction over uh, a child in this situation for another reason. And so in terms of going through the amendment, do you want me to just go through where there were changes from the previous version? Yeah, or? highlight okay. the major changes. Um, so in subsection B, um, the... Uh, there's, there's no, uh, this is just sort of re reiterating what I mentioned before that the, um, the clarifying that the court that's reviewing this petition has jurisdiction under Vermont law to make judicial determinations regarding uh, the custody and care of children, but is not, um, it's not uh, specific to the special immigrant juvenile status. Um, under federal law. It's just that these courts under Vermont law have this juris jurisdiction over a child. Um, subsection C, um, pr the procedure for a petition. Um, so when a, a vulnerable non-citizen child or a person who is interested in the welfare of that child uh, petitions the court um, the petition for special findings has to include all of the requirements for what is in the federal legislation for special immigrant juvenile status, but this section no longer, so it, it, it follows what's required in the federal law, but it no longer um, refers to just special immigrant juvenile status. Um, it is, uh, again, a little bit broader that this that any court that has jurisdiction over um, a non-citizen child in this circumstance would be able to make these petitions or would be able to make these special findings. Can I, can I ask a question, uh, Alice? Yeah. I'm just wondering, could this also apply to uh, a child in another country? Um, the I think the intent here, and I'll let uh, some other folks jump in on that, but I think the intent here is that this is a child in the United States who is making this petition um, to apply for, who's making this petition for special findings, which will allow them to stay in the United States um, if they uh, are granted special immigrant juvenile status. I guess the piece doesn't say um, stay someplace. I'm thinking of a family who one is in the process of um, maybe adopting a foreign child and things fall apart before the child gets to this country, um, even though they've done all the paperwork and all of that, could that child come under this provision? Uh, I, I 
think if they're adopting a child, then that child would become a U.S. citizen through uh, that uh, adoption. I'm, I'm um, talking so this about, is, yeah, sorry. Yes, I'm talking about before they get to this country and become a citizen, I'm talking about something happens in the child's country of origin before the child gets to the United States. Um, my understanding is that this would not uh, be available in that circumstance, but um, I can defer to those who, who uh, might be on that call. Aaron or Rebecca or anyone else want to comment on that? So I'm, I would be happy to comment on that. Um, good morning, everybody. Special immigrant juvenile status um, is something that non-citizen children can only apply for once they're in the United States. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. But to follow up on that question, if I could, Senator Sears, should yep. it, it be restricted to children who are residing within the geographical confines of Vermont? So I, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this. This could be a question about um, state court jurisdiction, Vermont state court jurisdiction in general. Would a Vermont state court have jurisdiction over uh, a Mexican national living in Mexico? Um, I don't believe so. And this, this bill certainly is not intended to change that. Um, that was Rebecca Turner from the Office of Defender General. I'm sorry. Just, for the record, you at least once just state your name so that the record can pick up who you are. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Sears. I, and I, I, I agree with what Aaron uh, Jacobson is saying. Uh, in terms of whether or not the Vermont uh, courts having jurisdiction over juveniles could reach to that juvenile outside of Vermont, um, again, we have Judge Zone here and others here with DCF can win, but I don't see that um, being the case again. The definite, so, I, and I don't think that it's necessary to add that language, Senator Benning, uh, because of how the, def the definition of um, dependent on the court, page two, lines three and four, that is a required finding for um, the state courts and to make a finding that a juvenile is dependent on the court means that it, the person is subject to the jurisdiction of, of, of the Vermont court. So it's, it's built into the definitions themselves, this threshold uh, requirement that the state court be able to invoke jurisdiction over the child. Now here, what we are trying to do is merely make sure it's clear that that jurisdiction extends to youth who are between you know over 18 and not yet 21. And so that again, that overall objective of this bill remains unchanged and um, really is the narrow focus here. Any other questions of where we've been so far, which is we're on line four of page three, I believe. And we just had an explanation of that section. I uh, keep going then? Yep, please. Um, so the rest of that section um, has not, has not sub sub substantively changed. It is just laying out what um, needs to be in the findings that the court will, uh, is being asked to uh, issue in the petition. Um, on page four, um, line six under additional findings, uh, what was added here is that um, if the party, if requested by a party, a court may make additional findings that are supported by evidence and, uh, and Vermont law was added uh, to that. Can I just ask a word about the use of the word abandonment? So um, let's just, my understanding is a child is here um, came with the mother, for example, got to Vermont, she was a um, dairy worker, is um, 
uh, because of immigration, is sent back to whatever home country she came from. That's is that abandonment? I mean, I, I don't think she abandoned the child. The 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 ice did. <laughs> Is there another word that could be used there? Um, so I think that this is lining up with the language used in federal law. Um, how the court interprets that um, may be something that uh, Rebecca or Erin or um, Jill might be able to answer better than me. Uh, this is Rebecca Turner from the Defender General's Office for the record. I, I think that abandonment is uh, is interpreted broadly and to the extent that, that Senator Sears, your concern is that, that, that it was not willful abandonment by the, by the mother and that could be a factor. Yeah. The language here is broad and it already includes or similar circumstances, right? So unable to care for the child because she's been physically prevented in that instance by by US government officials removing her. So I think that your concern that we need to maybe broaden that language is already there. And I'm speaking, uh, Rebecca, I think I'm, on, I'm looking at page three, line seven um, on, on this latest draft 1.1. Again, it goes to underline abandonment, abuse, neglect, or similar circumstances. Okay, well, that helps, thank you. Um, in on page four, subdivision three, under health, safety, and welfare considerations. Um, so this section is saying that um, in making a determination of whether it's in the best interest of the child to be returned to the child's uh, home country or their the parents' previous country of nationality, um, they the court will consider health, safety, and welfare considerations. And the language on lines eight through 10 was added that the health, safety, and welfare of the child must be of paramount concern when the court considers the best interests of the child. Okay. Um, the next few sections, um, some language was uh, removed here and added um, to section two with respect to extending the guardianship for children who are uh, over 18, uh, but have not yet attained 21 years of age. So I'll get to that um, a little further along, but that, um, that was another sort of major change to this amendment was that um, all of the language was um, in Title 14 and, a new, and this amendment adds some new language in Title 33 with respect to the extension of the, the guardianship um, for those uh, youth on, over the age of 18. Oh. Um, the notice requirement in subsection D um, uh, removed um, a reference. Sorry. Oh, I thought I heard a question. Uh, on subsection D at the bottom of page four, removed a reference. Um, for when uh, trying to find the identity or location of the child's parents, um, the court has to serve notice. And uh, the, the previous version referred to um, providing this uh, alternative method of, or service or waiving service if the child uh, sort of fit the description of what was in the federal law for a special immigrant juvenile. And this removes that that um, sort of cross-reference to the federal law here. But it's a may, not a shall, correct? It's in the court's discretion to, to decide to provide an alternative method of, or service or way of service, so it's a may. Judge Zone, okay with that? We have no issues with that. I, I would note that the one uh, section that I did have a, a concern about was the one that said guardianships because it talks about a guardianship pursuant to 
this it says for purposes of appointment of a guardian of the non-citizen child pursuant to this section, but this section uh, does not appoint guardians. Uh, as Ms. Wasserman said, that's done under Title 14. So I think the language, if it said for purposes of this section, comma, the term child or minor shall include, if you, re if you remove the language that says appointment of a guardian of the non-citizen child pursuant to, I think that cleans it up and makes it clear that the appointment is done under Title 14 and not 33. Okay. I think that was Judge Zone by the for the record. I apologize. Thank you. No, that's fine. I'm, not, I'm just we're trying to be informal, but at the same time, somebody checks back to the record and wants to know who just spoke. Um, okay. Well, moving right along. Okay. Um, subsection E: Expeditious adjudication. And a question came up about this in uh, last time I testified about, um, it says that the court shall here adjudicate and issue findings of fact on any petition for special findings under the section as soon as it, as it is administratively feasible and prior to that child turning 21. Um, so a change here was made that says that the court shall do this when it is in the best interests of the vulnerable non-citizen child so it does give the court some uh, discretion of, of determining that it's in the best interest of the child to hear the, the uh, petition um, and issue the findings uh, as soon as it, it is as administratively feasible. Um, and then On page six, uh, the construction section of the of the bill on line four, subsection H. Uh, it's this was changed from um, this section shall be liberally construed um, to be in the best interests of the child, and it was amended to uh, to be liberally construed to its legislative purpose. And then um, section two is all new language, as I mentioned. Um, so this is adding in title 33, um, the guardianship language, um, which says uh, a new section retention of jurisdiction over certain vulnerable non-citizen children. Um, so subsection A uses the same definitions that were in title 14 with respect to um, vulnerable, child and non-citizen. And then subsection B is saying that the family division may retain jurisdiction over the non-citizen child who has not yet turned 21 for the sole purpose of adjudicating a petition for special findings and making judicial determinations regarding the custody and care of the child consistent with this section. Um, nothing in the section expands the scope of the court's jurisdiction to order a youth into the custody of the commissioner for children and families uh, pursuant to this chapter. Uh, the procedure for petition in subsection C uh, is similar to what is laid out in title 14. So the child or a person interested in the welfare of the child may petition the court for the special findings um, to obtain relief from the underlying, underlying abandonment, abuse, neglect, or uh, similar circumstance. Um, there's a cross reference here that says in accordance with the procedure in Title 14, Section 3098, uh, the court reviews that petition, including affidavits and other evidence, issues the finding of facts, and makes relevant conclusions of law consistent with Section 5101 of this chapter. And that is the uh, purposes section uh, that has the uh, best, in best interest of the child um, uh, laid out, set forth in that section. Um, subsection D is the expeditious adjudication with respect to this, uh, to Title 33. 
So it says when it is consistent with the purposes as set forth in section 5101 of this chapter, which is the purposes section of, um, of this title, the court um, also can determine uh, that it, it shall hear the case and adjudicate and issue the findings uh, for special for on any petition for special findings uh, for a child prior to them turning 21 years of age. Subsection E um, is uh, duplicating the language in Title 14 about the additional remedies under Vermont law and similar findings of fact. So a child um, is not limited under this section from petitioning for special findings uh, for any other petition um, under another provision of law um, for any other rights and remedies that's available to, to that child. Um, and then in subdivision two, it says that the section um, shall not limit the court from issuing similar findings of fact or conclusions of law um, in any other proceedings concerning that child. Um, in any subsection F um, says that in any judicial proceedings in response to a request that the court uh, make special findings um, to support a petition, the information regarding the child's uh, personal information such as immigration status, nationality, place of birth um, is protected by state laws and remains confidential. And um, this uh, confidentiality and exemption from the Public Records Act is also in um, the language in Title 14. And then the effective date is July 1st of this year. And then finally on lines nine to 10, the new title of the bill is an act relating to state court petitions for vulnerable non-citizen youth. Thank you, that's helpful. And, um, my understanding is you work closely with several um, folks and particularly from the Office of Attorney General and the um, Office of Public Defender. Um, so I, I appreciate their input and their help with this. Uh, are there any comments from anybody who's in the audience? And the only change I've heard so far is uh, proposed by Judge Zone. Is that right? So anybody who would like to speak, if you could take that down now, uh, Becky, thank you. Senator Sears, I have a yes. question. Good. Um, Becky, if I'm reading this correctly, I'm just gonna throw out a scenario here. St. Johnsbury has a resident mom without the child, but over in Littleton, New Hampshire is the father with the child. Child is now 20 years old. The father leaves. There is certainly uh, the possibility that ICE could come along and say, um, we're going to bring the child back to country of origin. If I understand this correctly, the mom could petition a Vermont court and make a claim that whatever the past living conditions were in the previous country uh, were threatening to this individual's life in some fashion. Am I reading that correctly? So I think that there is an, uh, needs to be the child's health the child needs to be considered vulnerable. So the child's health, safety, or welfare um, has to be in jeopardy due to abuse, neglect, abandonment, or similar circumstance. And that the child's return to the country of origin would not be in the best interest of the child. So I don't know in this scenario what the child's uh, circumstance would be, um, but they would have to meet the requirements um, that they are, their health, safety, or welfare is in jeopardy. Right, so I guess I'm saying, I don't know if the mother in this scenario, uh, just because a father might not be, uh, might have been uh, deported in this scenario, I don't know what the situation is with the child's mother. 
And I, I can let somebody else speak to that who might, who actually <laughs> would be a uh, practicing in this area, but that's my, my reading of the situation. I think it would be specific to the circumstances of that child. Anybody I'm else? Assuming, I'd just like to lay out the scenario properly so I can get a good answer. Um, if the father was providing food and shelter for the 20 year old, because the 20 year old cannot speak English, was unemployed, etc., cetera. Um, and the father leaves, if I read this correctly, the mother could petition the Vermont court to demonstrate that this 20 year old now considered a child is in danger of their health or safety or their welfare being affected. The mom could go into a Vermont court and make an argument that number one, that child is in fact in some kind of welfare concern and she may provide evidence that the country of origin um, was, for instance, gang-related activity. That's why they left, and this child would be threatened with uh, being brought into the gang. If I read this correctly, that scenario could actually be accomplished with this piece of legislation. Am I incorrect? So I think where I, where... I might need a little help with this is that I don't know that Vermont would have jurisdiction over that child in this situation because that child is living in New Hampshire. Um, so I think that there would need to be a situation showing that once the father has left for some reason, if, if that child needs to be under a guardianship for some reason, if that guardianship was transferred to the mother in Vermont, then a Vermont court would then have jurisdiction over that child. But I think there would be a few steps that would need to, to happen. I don't, it wouldn't be an automatic situation for my reading of this. I guess I'm assuming the mother would be acting to either go through probate court or petition a family court pursuant to this legislation to get that child um, into a Vermont court. And that was why I raised the issue before about the Vermont court as opposed to any court. I just want to be clear that if we're going to enact this, we have a full understanding that the scenario I've just laid out could actually happen here. I, I think if the, the mother in Vermont, if there was a reason for that child to be um, in a guardianship situation and the mother and there was a petition for that in Vermont. Um, as part of that, the court would have jurisdiction over that child. So these special findings could be made um, in the court at that time, but the child would also have to meet the requi these requirements to receive those special findings. It wouldn't be automatic just because the child was um, being, the guardianship was being moved over to Vermont, the child would have to meet the other requirements of being, you know, a non-citizen child who was, um, you know, subject to some kind of abuse, abandonment, or neglect, or other circumstance, and it would not be safe for that child to return to uh, their home country or their parents' home country. I, I could be wrong, but Judge Zoni, I'd like a little help here. Um, it seems to me this bill is providing Vermont with jurisdiction over that child if the appropriate circumstances could be alleged by the petitioner, mother, who is in St. Johnsburg. Uh, Tom Zoni? To... Yep. Go ahead, Judge. Right. So Tom Zoni, Chief Superior Judge. I, uh, Senator Benning, I think you're correct. And I, I would just highlight that the I'll use the word the rub here is that I think uh, Senator Benning, you and myself and others may be thinking about, well, Uniform Child Jurisdiction Acts. And do we have jurisdiction over a child who lives in New Hampshire? The UCCJA that's set forth under Title 15 specifically defines child as an individual who has not reached age 18. Correct. And so this actually... This presents a, a unique circumstance that it, it doesn't really, it doesn't fall under what we would traditionally look at as jurisdiction for a child. And so I think that it would permit a Vermont court 
if that mother comes in and says, I have this uh, 19-year-old and uh, they can meet both factors, the abandonment, let's say, and the, and the abuse perspective, and the second perspective, I think, yes, it would appear to provide the Vermont court with jurisdiction to go forward. And again, the traditional UCCJA would not kick it out because the child's over 18. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just trying to make clear exactly what the potential is of what we're doing. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? If I could just comment briefly, um, and because I didn't say this before, Aaron Jacobson, Attorney General's office. Um, so Senator Benning, under your scenario, right, that, that um, 19 or 20 year old child, um, maybe because as you mentioned, um, does not speak much English and previously his father was helping provide his food and shelter and taking care of him might feel the need to move to Vermont to be with mom. At that point in time, if that 20 year old consented, mom could file for a guardianship in Vermont state court. And then if that guardianship is granted, then as well, um, mom or the child could petition for the special findings that are laid out in this bill. And if, the child could obtain those special findings that would allow him to then apply for special immigrant juvenile status with um, the federal immigration agency. So that's that's how that would um, look procedurally. Erin, if I could follow up in your um, statement, you said if the child conceded, what if the child does not concede? Now we have a, a parent coming in under this statute that seems to me to override any decision about this 18 or 19 or 20 year old uh, conceding to have a head. And I, I don't want to uh, walk away from the discussion thinking everything's gonna be hunky dory. I'm just trying to cover all bases. Sure, I think it's a great question. The way I read this bill, I'm looking at page, or um, line 15, guardianship. Um, and we're talking about children who are over 18 here. So it says for purposes of appointment of a guardian of the non-citizen child pursuant to this section, the term child or minor shall include a person who is less than 21 years of age and who consents to the appointment or continuation of a guardian after 18 years of age. So after age 18, then that youth, over 18 youth, who's also under 21, um, would have to consent to that kind of guardianship. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Senator Sears, uh, if I may, this is Rebecca Turner yep. from the Office of the Defender General. I just Please. noticed, uh, Rebecca, uh, just a typo on, on page one, uh, line 15. It's written here in the version I have, child's parents county of origin. And I, and I think that was supposed to be country, country of origin. I'll address that, thank you. Okay, sure. And, and I also, for the record, wanted to say that that uh, Judge Zone's suggests suggested correction um, certainly is is amenable from the Defender General's perspective, and would support making that change. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions about this draft? Would the one change? Um, no. Everybody's okay with this? Yeah, I mean, in the room. 
Um, Senator Sears, yeah. uh, this is Jill Rudd, clinical professor of immigration law from Vermont Law School. I'm just offering a comment that Vermont Law School's immigration clinic supports this latest iteration of the bill, including the amendments proposed today. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Jennifer from DCF, any concerns or that you'd like to express? No, we thank you. I've worked with um, Aaron and with Rebecca, and, and we got the language in around not expanding the uh, scope of custody for DCF. So DCF is comfortable with this, and we're comfortable proceeding with this when we do have custody of a child already. We just didn't want it expanded. Okay. Hey, thank you. Um, I wanted to take a brief opportunity to thank Rebecca for working, Rebecca Wasserman, for working with all of those folks that are here on the line right now to to get this into some shape that is um, that can work for um, hopefully a small number of kids, but um, that may need the special immigrant status. So um, with that, is there uh, this would be draft? I'm assuming. 2.1 or 1.2 is you have to make a minor change. Yes, it would be draft 1.2 and I would be um, uh, correcting the spelling mistake on page one uh, from county to country. And I would be um, striking out in the guardianship uh, subdivision on page four, um, the appointment of a guardian of the non-citizen pursuant to so it would say for purposes of this section, the term child or minor shall include. Okay. Um, is there further discussion on this? And, and is there a motion to report favorably or to amend S-163 as presented in draft 2.1? Senator White has moved that we report this favorably. Is there any further discussion or report the amendment? Yeah. We amend the bill. <clears throat> All right. Um, Peggy, could you please call the roll? Senator Benning? Yes. Senator Nickett? Yes. Senator White? Yes. Senator uh, yes. Ruth? Yes. Senator Sears? Yes. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to report favorably as amended? Senator White. I will. And can I just say that um, um, bills like this never get, they're not glitzy and they don't get a lot of attention and stuff a bit from the press or from anybody else, as a matter of fact, but they make a huge difference in the lives of those that they touch. So I, I think that it's really important that we, we spend the time <laughs> doing the, kinds of bills, even though they don't get the, the press that um, all those um, high profile bills get. So I will. Well, well said, Senator White. I totally agree. I think. Um, yeah. um, any further discussion? If not, Senator White has moved to report um, S-163 as amended favorably to the Senate. Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning? Yes. Senator Nika? Yes. Senator White? Yes. Senator Baruth? Yes. Senator Sears? Yes. It's great. We're unanimous. And I thank all of you very much. Who would like to report this bill? Recognizing you may not get headlines. <laughs> I'm happy to do it if somebody will help me. I'm assuming that I'll be out of my stupor. Um, I'm sure that um, Ledge Council and folks that are here on stage will be more than happy to help you with the report, Senator White. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of an abstract area that will, and I think you said it well, so I will leave it at that. Um, and thank you very much. So, um, Peggy, you'll get the copy to Senator White at some point today. Yep. As soon as I get it, uh, I'll get it from Peggy first. Right, Peggy? I'm about yeah. to send it to you. So while we have, 
Judge and Zone any of the here. people that um, testified want to send me any um, yes. we'll do. poignant statements, please, please feel free. Um, Peggy, while we have Judge Zona here, um, and before we go uh, to the break, I believe you do have just, ju uh, oh. Justice Warple's um, nomination now. I do. So why don't we set for next Friday? We're going to have a very limited hour. Um, why don't we set her confirmation for next Friday? If, if that, if works for the justice and I'll let Judge Zone work that out with her and you Peggy and um then we could do our confirmation hearing a week from this Friday. A week from this Friday, not this Friday. I will let Judge Wables know that it would be the 18th at 9 a.m. Is that in person or is Zoom permissible? Zoom is going to be permissible on the 18th. After that, we don't know. <laughs> We're awaiting you know. further instructions from the leadership of the Senate, but I, I can definitely say that we will be Zooming on the 18th. I will let her know. Thank you. All right. Or a hybrid of that, um, I should say. Okay, well, why don't we take a break until 11 when we take up S-140 which is Senator Bruce Phil, and we held off on voting on it until he got back. Much appreciated.